Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm sharing with you my favorite manual die cutting machine because I always love to have a backup. It's also great and portable. Plus I've got some tips, tricks and techniques. We're making an amazing home decor project to stretch your dies even further. So let's get started. As I mentioned, I'm going to be sharing with you, um, first of all, a pick for manual die cutting machines. Now, it's no secret I love an electronic one, but I also love to have a backup. Maybe you've got power cut, we're on the go. I do lots of different classes in places. So I wanted to share with you some options. And I approached Sizzx because I really liked seeing this. This is their fold away big shot online, um, and I wanted to try it out. So the reason I picked this particular machine is you can see it's really nice and compact, which is a big thing for me. Then you can open out each of these sides. You'll see they're a little bit loose. So all you do is you push these in and they clip. And then the other thing I really like is you have storage in either side. So you can store tools or maybe dies you're working with, a roll of purple tape, those kinds of things, all in these little side panels. And then they fold right down, ready for you to use. You've got your handle on the other side and you know, just simple, easy, ready to go. So I wanted to share this particular one um, and I've really enjoyed working with it. So I'm gonna put this to the side while I show you what we're going to create. I have already prepped my plates here. So traditional die cutting sandwich, standard platform, your thin die adapter, and then my cutting pads, one of them I've added sticky grid to. Now it's no secret, again, I love my sticky grid because sticky grid is great in your Misty. I've used it in all my stamp platforms. I have videos about it. It was actually designed for die cutting. And the idea is you put it on your plate like this, you take your dies, just like so, and what you can do is arrange the dies however you want. So there's no magnets or anything like that needed. The really nice thing about having all of these grid lines is if you want to line up things like words and those kinds of things, it's super, super simple because you can line them up on here. I've got cutting side up and then I could grab myself just a piece of paper. I have some over here. And again, line up your paper exactly where you want it. And you just die cut this through. You pop this on top and you go through exactly as you ordinarily would. So I would take this and take it into my big shot. And you see it's really easy to, it's not much pressure to put it through. Simple. And there we go. We have a beautifully cut image. Nothing has moved. And the way I install my sticky grid is I actually put it down on my die cut and my nails are not conducive to picking anything up, but they do look very pretty. Um, you can just very carefully peel away. And of course this piece, you can now reuse it. There's no sticky residue or anything on it. It is a thin piece, so like anything, it would curl slightly. If you use something thicker, it's not gonna curl up on you. And then I have my die cut piece and I have it exactly where I want it, which is another thing I really love about the sticky grid. So that's what sticky grid is originally designed for, but we digress from today's project. I'm using some of the new chapter one releases. So I picked out these thinlet dies. They are called Corsage. And I also picked out the Biggs die here. Uh, this one is called Grace. And I think I love florals. I'm a big floral person. We're coming into spring. We've got Mother's Day, Easter, lots and lots of things we'll use florals for. So this Biggs die cuts out these flowers. And this is how they look. You can see them here. You've got the stamens in the center here and then they go out to a full flower. And I used some of the really pretty uh, colored cardstocks as well. And I reviewed this tool set the other day and they mentioned how there was this little quilling tool that has this tiny, tiny little cut in here. You can probably just about see it, but all you have to do is perfect for this. So I take my start of my flower and I thread it inside of this. So you see how that started, just like that. And then all you do is just keep twisting. So you just twist and twist and twist over and over. And you see how easy this is. Just keep the bottom lined up and it will naturally start to curl out for you. So I'm just going to go back, I messed that up. And then when I get to a point, I literally just take that out. Now I've done the center piece and I roll with my fingers. Just like this. 
and just keep going until you get all the way out and you can make these as tight or as loose as you want. I actually usually tend to curl it all the way up and then just release it to get a little bit looser and I'll show you in a second what I mean. Just turn all the way in first but you can see it's just creating a really nice flower. And then this bottom piece you just put onto the bottom like this, glue it in and that is it. There is your flower and it covers off your base as well. So you can see, and if you want it a little bit looser, you can just release. And you see there how I've got this gorgeous flower in there. So you just put a dot glue on. I like doing it with hot glue just because it sticks instantly. And what I did was I made lots and lots of these flowers. You can see it doesn't take long to make one. And I started making this wreath. So you can just keep adding these on and you can see you have this gorgeous wreath. So you could create this um, for an occasion, for a baby shower, all sorts of gorgeous things. Just a styrofoam ring and then just cover it in these flowers. You could even maybe spray paint it a pretty color beforehand if you wanted to. So there's one option of how to use these. I also want to show you a really trendy option. I saw this on Pinterest. And we all love Pinterest things and think, well, can I actually make that at home? Yes, you can with these dies. So I'm gonna show you how to make a gorgeous picture frame using these dies. These are the Thinlet dies you just saw me cut out. So I've already cut some out with my Sizzex thing. I'm gonna grab my crease and curl out the packet. Oh, it's stuck. Of course it's stuck. Um, I use this for creativation. We took it with us. You may have seen our booth. We had tons of flowers in the booth. This was an awesome tool to use. So this is how the crease and curl works. It's like two little chopsticks that you put your flower between and you just curl. Do you see how easy that is? I mean, it's a really inexpensive tool. And yes, you can do it with a bone folder, but it's just not as easy as doing that. And you can do pretty much any size of flower in there as well. So that's all I do. I'm going to do the same on some other colors. And then you can do either different variations. You could ink the tips if you wanted to. Lots and lots of different things you can do. So again, I'm gonna do one more of this darker color. So you could layer up a couple of the same one as well, like I'm doing here, just to give you some dimension. And so you can see how this is coming together. Again, I'm just going to take some glue. This is the um, Sizzix glue. I think this is a new one. I have one upstairs on my craft table too. It's got a nice fine nozzle on it. And all I do is take a dot of glue, add my next color flower in, and I'm offsetting. So by offsetting, you can see my petals are somewhere in between. You know, so you've got the in between here. And then I'm going to do the same on this, just to add that extra dimension. And I'm making sure it's not exact, it's just kind of somewhere slightly off. This one I'm going to do with my fingers, I'm just going to crinkle these up a little bit so they look kind of fun and stamony. Again, you could layer a couple of these if you wanted to. And I'm only going to put the glue on this little yellow bit on the bottom. And you could add some glitter and things if you wanted to. And then again, I'm gonna add just a dab of glue on the back here. I'm gonna take a leaf, give it a little curl. It's just so easy. I'm gonna give it a bend that way as well. And I'm gonna put this somewhere around there. And you can see that is how easy it is to build a flower. So really, really simple to build a flower like that. I mean, how easy was that? It took me like 30 seconds really to build it. And you can build lots of those and you could do a wreath the same way. You can do all those things. But I want to show you, because I saw this on Pinterest. So I took a wooden frame, just a you know square frame like this, and I've added my flowers on ready. I'm just gonna get my measurements because I can't remember what they were. It's an eight by eight frame. So really easy there. And I'm gonna grab myself a piece of pretty patterned paper. This is a one I had in my stash. You have to excuse me, I do have a cold, but I'm crafting on the fruit. So I'm gonna grab out my little measurer and put it in the side here. And I wanna cut this to a smidge under eight by eight. So I'm gonna go for like seven and three quarters ish. And then, again, the 
this is really easy. I just kind of pop this out, pop it back in, and my guillotine is done. Again, I'm gonna take my frame, turn it over, and I'm just gonna take my Sizzex glue because this will bond wood, paper, all those kinds of things together. Just make sure I have glue all the way around because I do want a good bond, but at the same time, we don't want squelching, so I'll get rid of that little bit that went in there. This does dry clear too, so um, you could also add a nice piece of felt or something on the back if you wanted to. I'm just going to stick that on. You see how I've now created the backing of my frame. And I have a really pretty picture that was taken at a recent school event of Tilly and I. So I'm going to put this in here and we're going to create this perfect frame. Let's put that to the side for a second. And again, we're just going to do a couple of quick trims. And I'm gonna show you how to do really easy matting as well because I'm all about easy crafting. Let's trim this down. Okay, so let's talk about easy matting for this one. So I'm taking just a piece of black cardstock and I'm gonna make sure my size is about right, yes. And I just want a small little bit of a black frame. So how do we do that easily? Again, little dabs of glue, just a few. You can see, not much at all. This is nice, it won't ripple. I did try it out before. And I'm putting this on, and because I have liquid adhesive, I also have a little bit of wiggle room, which is nice. So I've gone and stuck this down with an even border on these two pieces. So I haven't measured anything. And I can get rid of that with my little electric eraser, but this does dry clear, so you won't actually notice it by the time we're done. So I'm just gonna go in here. And I'm gonna trim it to look exactly the same. So you can see here, so now I have a nice even black border, no measuring required. How simple is that? Again, some glue. This one's a little bit heavier and I'm not so worried. So I'm going to take my frame back in here. I'm going to add this in and you could add some words over the top, a pretty sentiment if you wanted to. But Tilly really loved this picture of her and I. So I wanted to share with you how you can create this really pretty frame. And look how easy that was. So just two beautiful things. I saw this project on Pinterest and I think it's definitely a Pinterest win and you can do it at home as well. So go check this out, try out the Big Shot Fold Away, try out the new chapter one releases, lots of fun tools. I think that crease and curl will make making flowers so much easier as well. I love it, I say we used it in our booth at Creativation and you can create these frames or a gorgeous flower wreath too. So don't forget to join us tomorrow for another tip trick or technique and you can join us then. So be sure you've hit subscribe, rung the bell, all of those fun things. I'll see you again tomorrow. Happy crafting and don't forget to tag us in your projects. I'll see you then. Bye.